Today we're building a habitat for the red kangaroos and the geometric design is something out of a fever dream. So why am I building a fever dream? Well, that's pretty much because I have the attention span of a goldfish. Because originally, I was looking up how to make an oval shaped building. Because I know how to make circular buildings, but I didn't know how to cleanly make an oval shaped building. Like I can whip up an oval shaped building by hand, but it's not going to look as clean as when I'm using the mud brick pillar technique. Basically just using a center point where I can center everything that I'm building on. So I looked up how to draw an oval. Because usually when it comes to drawing, you need to find a center point and then you use tools to create like a perfect circle. So I was looking up how to draw a oval and I found it and it was basically just like, yeah, you need two circles, find the midpoint where the circle starts and then, you know, other steps. So I looked that up, thought, all right, I'm going to build an oval shaped building for whatever animal this is going to be, because by that point I didn't know that I was going to build a kangaroo habitat because usually I built the building and then as I'm building the building, I'm like, oh yeah, this could work for this animal because it's like this size or that. But Pinterest was then because I was looking up, all right, what's the rest of the structure going to be? Because I know how to make the oval now, but like, how is it going to look? Like, what would be a good look for this building? Pinterest, however, had other ideas and it gave me or served me up Mandela's, or at least I think it's Mandela's because whenever I think of Mandela's, I think of the Mandela effect, which is something completely different. But Mandela's are, if I'm correct, those like sort of circular patterns and such that you make. Like to explain Mandela's, um, this is probably going to melt your brain, so you know, be aware of that. But when I think of Mandela's, I think of like when you were a kid and you were drawing and you had these like stencils or sort of plastic stencils hole in the middle with all of these notches and you had like a cock shaped circular thing that you could insert there with holes where you could place a pencil and then you could like circle it around and it would draw these patterns for you that's at least what i think of when i think of mandela and then you also had like other things with like geometric designs and such so that's what pinterest served me up and basically what my brain thought was fuck these ovals i'm going to bake a melted cone so i'm going to call what we're building right now and after that because i wanted like the cone itself i thought there wasn't enough space for the kangaroos because by this point i did realize oh yeah i want kangaroos here and kangaroos they need a bit more indoor space because they probably are not going to be very happy with the dutch winter so i thought like oh yes they need a little bit more indoor space so that they won't really like be completely traumatized if they have to stay indoors for a day if it's like freezing or such so they need a little bit more space so that they can kind of hop around there a little bit so that's why i then decide all right let's build something next to it or attached to it and that's going to be wave shaped now the entire thing with like the wave shaped and this melted cone i really don't know how to describe this shape that i'm building right now but the entire thing is and I am going to be preaching from a mountain here again, so be aware of that as well. But it wasn't difficult to build. As you can see, what was the thing was, first of all, I think I'm a psychopath after building this, like looking back on how I built it. But the thing is, it's very tedious because it's a lot of back and forth. Like it's a continuous repeating cycle of like, oh, selecting pieces, angling it, raising or lowering it rotating it slightly maybe and then selecting the next row or the next pieces doing the same thing again so it's very tedious work like it wasn't difficult at all as soon as i understood like oh this is what i need to do like as soon as i knew all right this is like the blueprint of what i want then it was pretty easy for me to do now the reason why i might be a psychopath is this took two hours or around two hours not just this comb but also the wave shape two hours of very tedious work const constantly back and forth i did this in complete silence so no music going on in the background no live streams or anything else just complete silence i might be a psychopath because that doesn't seem healthy just complete silence for two hours 
doing the most tedious thing ever like i zoned out so hard while doing this because again as you can see with the wave shaped roof it's just back and forth selecting pieces angling it selecting the next row angling that like it's a constant back and forth of that and i did that in complete silence where usually if i'm building i need music i need something in the background while like my hands are busy and my brain is somewhat busy z or eyes like brain and eyes are like half there but like i need something in the background this was just complete silence and i do have like some channels that i've kind of set aside of like i'm not watching their actual live streams or at least i'm not watching their live streams live i always just like there's this one channel i'm not going to name them but there's one channel and it's not at all related to planet zoo but i actually wait until their live stream is finished because then i can watch it all back and just continuous there's never any buffering and such so it's continuous just something going on in the background that's i think that's the reason obvious like i never watch the live streams live because i don't want buffering or anything like that because sometimes internet is just going to shit itself so complete silence because i wasn't even you watching those so i have no idea how i am still well actually i'm not mentally sane let's face that i am not mentally sane like look at what i'm building right now do you think a mentally sane person is going to build this though to be fair i also have like well it's not an obsession with chicken nuggets i haven't actually eaten chicken nuggets in like a few months now i do crave them sometimes but then that's because we all crave trash at some points i want to make a joke there but we're not going there but anyways back to the actual building and such because this is a very design heavy building and i said in the previous video of like oh i rejected the armadillo design that i originally came up for for the wombat habitat because it was so design heavy and this is like two steps away from an art piece it's still functional because i don't like art piece buildings i usually like them to have a bit of function like if you're going to use the space at least make it also a little bit useful and not just something to look at so why am i now building a very design heavy building first point is because i keep ripping the ones out that i have because the australian section is supposed to be like filled with like organic shapes that kind of remind me of like aboriginal architecture and such and I keep ripping them out because the wombat habitat, like the original one, had a little bit of a, like a organic shape with the burger shack right next to it. And then the wallaby habitat is also going to be deleted because I don't like it. But that had the most significant organic shape with the what I call the starfish roof. So those are going to be gone. And the rest of the buildings are all a lot more functional. Like you could say like, oh, the crocodile roof has a little bit more of a design feature or aesthetic but even then it's a flat roof in the end like it looks pretty from like a guest point of view which is of course the most important like just look at let's say disney and such like if you're walking around disney it looks really pretty as such if you look at it from a bird side view you can just see all just like the flat roofs and just the fake facades or not well they're not completely fake but just like the facades look a lot prettier than the whole building so the australian section has a lot of that right now whereas like it's a pretty facade but then the roof or other parts of the building are completely functional so i wanted something to kind of honor the original idea for the australian section and i want to do more of these i mean the entire platypus and koala house that i have in mind is also going to be very design heavy and yeah with design or function heavy buildings you usually end up with kind of boxy buildings whereas with design heavy buildings you can get wild shapes such as a melted cone and a weird wave but that's one reason why i wanted to have a very design heavy building also the building stands on its own like there's no building surrounding it so i can more easily blend it in with more function heavy buildings or other buildings next to it because it can kind of follow this building like it's a lot easier to 
blend in other buildings with a design heavy building and blend a design heavy building in with more functional or other buildings like it's usually a lot easier to do it one way instead of the other and then also because it stands on its own it doesn't drag anything down it really is just like oh a really nice building off in the distance like it's actually on the right sideline that like right from the get-go right when you go into the australian section you actually see this building just kind of poking over the trees like that's the thing when it came to the cone i really wanted it to be high enough so that you could see it from a distance because you kind of want those interesting buildings that are in your sideline they're not directly there like you can't see everything of them just so that you peek interest into what's there because yeah you're not going to see the kangaroos right from the entrance but you will see the rooftop of this building so that's also the idea and just when it came to the actual roof you can see oh there's things sticking out usually i go for like smooth like really like clean roofs but here there's beams sticking out everywhere like the wave shaped roof the cone shaped roof they all have these beams sticking out the reason that i did this is because it kind of gives it a more weave or woven feel like it feels like the roof was woven together and i kind of like that especially for like organic shaped roofs and especially when i'm thinking of like aboriginal architecture now mind you i'm i'm going to say i will be a ignorant with a lot of things so i'm really just using like baseline knowledge or not baseline just like face value knowledge i think i i don't know how, how you directly call it but like when it comes to our original architecture both traditional and modern i saw like a lot of really organic shapes so i'm trying to mimic that a bit so that's why i really liked like oh things sticking out and such to give it that woven look like i didn't want to use thatch or anything because i kind of want to keep thatch for like the southeast asia area and the african area so that those have like materials all for their own like right from the get-go i'm like setting out materials of like oh i'm not going to use this color because i'm going to use it in the european section or this color or this kind of roof that's the asian section like that's the amount of planning that i do i when it comes to actually laying out the zoo the australian section is the most laid out i've ever done that most of the things i'm just building as i'm going but when it comes to like color palettes materials i do plan it out in advance now the roof, besides being very tedious, was even more tedious because the thing here is when it comes to attaching the roof to the actual building or to the actual walls, I'm dealing with multiple angles here because you have the angle of the roof, then you have the angle of the walls. So you need to kind of make that work. And it's a little bit difficult when most of the pieces in Plan 2 don't really facilitate that because most of the pieces in Plan 2 or most of the building pieces are rectangles or they are blocks and such. So you have a few angles and then those things, because of their size, might stick out in weird places. So in the end, like I first tried to do this with just the uh, plaster blocks, but those kept sticking out everywhere and looking really just weird. So in the end, I just decided, uh all right if i can't have multiple angles in one piece i'm going to use the smallest piece possible so in the end i just decided let's stick some beams upright that's going to work just need to make it so that they don't stick out of the roof on the top side and don't stick through the wall on the downside in the end it worked out fine and then here's the thing as well i thought the building was a bit boring even after that incredible roof like, I'm really proud of that roof. I'm, I will not hide that. Like, I'm really proud of it just because it's like, it's a shape that I've never done really before. It's still following the same idea of like the way that I built circular things. Because you basically, you have a center point and then you build from it. Like, you have a diameter of like, how big do you want it? You also always need to like double that because if you like center it on the center point and then drag it out, if you then rotate it around that same distance from the center point to the piece is going to be on the other side so it's still the same idea when it comes to 
a dome and the building that I've built right now. But it was still kind of boring because it's beige. Like everything was beige. And I do realize I'm a little bit guilty of just sticking to one color because all of the buildings are just beige. I'm a basic bitch when it comes to that. I just like my beige buildings. Like it's beige, brown, black and white, but then it's usually kind of warm toned black and white. So it kind of blends in really nicely, but it is kind of boring if you just have all beige. Like even the roof wouldn't be able to like make that work. So the reason why I changed the building to be half orange is because I wanted a bit of color. Just to make it pop out a little bit more. Like you're not going to see the orange base of this building from far away. But it is going to make it so that when you get closer to the building, it's sort of more of like, huh, I didn't realize this building was going to look like that. Like, I kind of want to keep surprising people as they, like, turn around corners and such. I do have a bit of difficulty when it comes to, like, oh, yeah, I need to also use other colors. Like, I need to use, like, reds or greens, yellows and such. Like... Making that changing room for the entrance of Natra is yellow because it's, of course, it's a changing room. So it's going to be like, well, a baby changing room station, something along those lines. But because it's supposed to be for children, you usually want brighter colors because children like bright colors. Like, that's no secret. Like, even I, as when I was young, was just like, ooh, bright colors. Like, this is actually a funny thing. You will have seen this with the, or might have spotted this with the channel, but the channel, or at least the image or the icon of the cha channel, which is of course this squirrel, the background color has changed. Because originally it was red, because I thought like, oh, that's going to pop out a lot. And then I changed it to green, because green was my favorite color at the time. And now it's purple, because now I like purple a lot more than green. And it's not just like, no, I don't want lavender or anything. I want royal purple. Because I am a slut for Byzantine history, culture and such. So whenever I think of like Byzantines and such, I just think of royal purple. And now I am just like, everything needs to be purple. I know Claire is what my, well, maybe might be watching this and be like, bitch, purple is my color. Yeah, I've colonized it. We Dutch are very good at that. Just look at... Well, actually, compared to the English, the French, and the Spanish, we had a much smaller empire, but they, yeah. Also, yes, colonialism, bad. I know, it was a joke. But anyways, back to the actual building. It's actually kind of funny that, like, half of the time when I'm talking or making these voiceovers, I have like three topics laid out, like completely prepared. And then as soon as I start talking, it's just like brain shuts off now. Like you can hear the windows shut off sound just going on well, as soon as I start recording. And all of the topics, like sometimes I want to make a video where I'm like, yeah, I'm explaining how I'm building stuff and such. And then my brain just goes, let's talk about chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets is a recurring topic. I'm not obsessed with chicken nuggets. It's just, it's just the trash that we love. I don't think anybody will say McDonald's is healthy. Like, I think you, it's healthier for a, well, actually to get a burger than a salad. Also, if you get a salad at any kind of fast food place, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, I will judge you. If you get a salad at a fast food place, doesn't matter if it's McDonald's, Burger King or anything. Why? Like, you're already there. You know that you're eating trash food. It, are you that much in denial of like, no, I'm healthy. Bitch, you're not. If you were healthy, you were cooking shit at home. Not here at McDonald's, wasting my time because I have to wait for your salad to be prepared. Let me eat my 20-piece chicken nuggets. Yeah, I I like doing those polls as well because a lot of people were actually like, no, 9-piece or like 6-piece nuggets. And I'm just like, no, you don't get a burger. You just get a 20-piece of nuggets and are very happy. You also feel like a pig. 
<laughs> like that's the thing with McDonald's. You know you're eating trash and you will feel guilty. Like some people go to church or confessional for that. I just get chicken nuggets and I feel guilty. I am willing to confess my sins after eating chicken nuggets. Although those sins are not that big actually. <laughs> like I keep saying like, oh yeah, evil murders, mascot and such. And then I realized that like, yeah, in real life, I don't really do much. I mean, I'm a hermit, so there's not a lot of things when it comes to that. The actual funny thing is, which is kind of weird because I'm a hermit. I don't think anyone will be surprised of like, yeah, I don't really like talking to people. Well, actually, talking to people is not the worst thing. Although I'm a bit like I constantly think of myself of like, am I being creepy because I just like listening? Like, I just like kind of zoning out, listening while conversation is going on around me. And then occasionally, like, butting in, of course, and saying stuff because I'm not there just as, like, a fucking microphone, just listening to everything and not saying a word. But I'm just like, yeah, you have interesting stuff to say. Like, a lot of people, or pretty much everyone, has interesting stuff to say. And I just like that. And the funny thing is, like, you would think, like, oh, Poison is going to be very afraid to call someone. No, bitch, I will call. I will not message you. I will just directly call you. Because I'm just like, yeah, over messages, things might get, like, warped. Like, you might not get, like, the full idea true. And I'm just like, nope, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm just going to call you. Well, occasionally I still, I'm just like, yeah, I can't deal with you right now. I'm going to just message you because otherwise I will blow just like all of the arteries in my neck. But most of the time I'm just like, no, I'm going to call you. Like, I don't feel bothered about that. Like some people might, or, or like you see these like videos or shorts of like people being deadly afraid or just like hissing at the phone as soon as as somebody who they don't know calls them and i'm just like yeah i'm probably that bitch that's calling you <laughs> like yes i am socially inept but i will call you without any problem i also like found out well not found out i kind of knew this but it really became just like clear to me when i played phasmophobia with friends once as just like like, I am terrified when playing games on my own. But as soon as I'm playing stuff with others, I'm just like, you guys are scared. I need to protect you guys. And for some reason, I'm just not afraid as soon as there's other people with me in the game. As soon as there's a voice call or anything going on at the same time, I'm just like, yeah, fuck you demons. You don't scare me. Oh, jump scare. Fuck off. And I will punch somebody in the face. But as soon as I'm alone, like, I can't deal with Minecraft on my own because the games just make awful noises. But as soon as somebody else is with me in game, I'm just like, I need to protect everybody. Or I'm just like, you guys are so fucking incompetent, let me deal with it. It's either one of those two dots. <laughs> and I'm just like, running headfirst into danger. And I'm just like, yeah, you bitches couldn't do this. I'm going to do it now. Everybody dies. And like, I have no leadership capabilities or such. I'm just like a human shaped battering ram then. And I enjoy the hell out of it. Like there's this thing in like Dragon Age. I think it's uh, Cassandra. Where it was like, I want, you can't be a battering ram. I think Vivian says that. It's been a long time when I last played Dragon Age Inquisition. I think it's like a, like a conversation dialogue between those two of like, yeah, you can't be a be human shaped battering ram. Yes, I can, says Cassandra. And I'm just like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> if I want, I can be a human shaped battering ram. Most of the times when I'm on my own, I'm just like, nope, not dealing with this. Nope, not at all. Bye. Go away. Nope. But as soon as somebody else is there, I'm just like, you are really squishy you also like screaming looking at you claire and basic 
pretty much everyone who I play with. And I'm just like, nope. You guys are not going to be able to deal with it. Let me deal with it. And then I... Well, most often I don't die because for some reason I have... <laughs> I don't know why. Like, all of these times I'm looking back at it and it's just like, I should have died there. Like, uh, running head first into enemies in game is usually not the best tactic. But here I am just like, nope, I survived that somehow. Just button mashing, keeping attacking and just keep pushing for it. Works in a surprising lot of games, actually. Probably not in any of like the, let's say, horror games. Probably. But then in horror games, I would just leave your ass. I'm just like, yep. Nope. You are squishy here, but uh, nope, just not dealing with this. Bye. <laughs> like, I am the asshole who will just leave right at the start of a horror movie. I'm just like, yep. If you want to go into that haunted mansion or haunted house, you do that. I would rather eat ice cream out of the tub in my pajamas while listening later on of like, oh yeah, your friend died. I told them not to go in there yeah i'm that one anyways moving on back to the actual video and the actual build because i got sidetracked so much but here's the the thing again of just like the build or the building takes a lot of time but then when it came to the actual habitat like the outdoor like the plants and everything that actually came rather easily the one thing that i did struggle with is you already see that, like, you have the curvy part, and then it connects on to the main part. Oh boy, that was a, tri a tricky thing, because it's just, like... Ugh. I had an idea, but, like, it's... Again, it's multiple angles. You have the curved main part, that not only the part itself is curved, but the entire structure that it sits on is also curved. But it's curved in a different way. So... Plants who just doesn't really deal well with having multiple angles on one piece. So having to do that with the idea that I had was just torture. Eventually it worked. I haven't finished it completely because by that point I was just like, yeah, this is future poison's problem. We are going to deal with this later. I also made the windows into like the kangaroo habitat. I had one side, like the extension, a little bit more blocked out so that the kangaroos had a little bit more privacy. But then the actual cone, I did leave the windows completely open. I did, however, put a fence in there. You will see this later. But I put a fence in there because kangaroos are dicks. At least the videos that I've seen, because they like to uh, attack dogs for some reason. I don't know why. But Or maybe it's just like the videos that get suggested to me are just all kangaroos well actually it's i started looking up people fighting kangaroos because it's kind of like the same idea as like florida man fighting a crocodile or an alligator i was just like curious but kangaroos are dicks because i saw one kangaroo trying to unalive a dog by trying to like push it underwater and then the owner just comes up and just smacks it and then there was another one, again, like tro a kangaroo just holding onto a dog, choking it, I think. Owner just comes up and just smashes it in, in the face. And it's just like, what the fuck happens? Like, it's pretty much like the owner of the dog just hit the reset button on the kangaroo. And it's just like, we're storing factory settings right now. As the kangaroo is just like, T-posing there. Just like, what the fuck just happened? And then the animal just realized, yeah, I'm not the top predator here. Actually, kangaroos aren't predators. They're complete herbivores. They're just dicks. And yeah, I kind of just think of like, yeah, Australia is the Florida, just internationally. Because Australia is always where the weird shit happens. And then when it comes to like the crocodiles, because I, of course, went into a deep dive of just like looking up people fighting crocodiles and kangaroos. It was just an old guy just smacking a crocodile with a frying pan and then i looked up like the like not a remix but like somebody edited the video so that you had like the really big 
doink sound when it came to the crocodile being hit by the frying pan. And it's just the most hilarious shit ever. Because the animals are just like, what the fuck is happening? And then with the kangaroo, I realized as well, and I later saw this also in a video. If you just hold it down, like if you make sure that it isn't able to use its leg, it's pretty much just like, it's going to go into a cat fight and it's just going to slap you with its weird T-Rex arms. And it's just like, yeah, it does have claws there, of course. But it's just, it looks really weird. <laughs> it looks really funny because it's just like, I can't do anything. So here, I have my little T-Rex arms flaming at you like a blow-up balloon thing that you see at like a car dealership. Because a Kangaroo's greatest weapons, I think, are its legs because they're really powerful. And so it's just like, nah. Like, that's the sound that I think of when I see a kangaroo just trying to fight when it's not able to use its legs. It's just a toddler wailing. Also, this is the thing that I talked about, or the bridge that I talked about, that was really difficult until I figured out how to do it. Like, that's a lot of things when it comes to building for me. It's just like, yeah, it's difficult at first, but as soon as I get a little bit of a handle on things, as soon as I kind of realize, oh, well, this is how this works, and this is how that, that works, this is how it looks nice and clean, then it comes very easily to me. Like, that's, I think, again, this is going to sound so fucking egocentric of me, but for me, it's just really easy for me to pick things up. As soon as I really know what I'm doing, I can easily repeat stuff. I think that's probably my greatest asset when it comes to building stuff. It's just like, I am able to pick up things really easily. Anyways, so trying to build this bridge, it's not completely finished because I actually had the idea that this bridge is movable. So that's why the circle continues in the actual main part. So that like, hey, if the zoo is closed, they will eventually turn all of these bridges open or like make it so that the pod isn't connected anymore. I'm not doing that right now because this video is already so fucking long, but I decided, all right, maybe that's going to be the plan of like, oh, they are going to like close the pods so that they can slowly funnel the people towards the entrance. Kind of like some theme parks do that where they close off areas like at the back of the park and then slowly people get pushed to, this, to the entrance when the park closes. I also started using gum trees. I think they're gum trees. They're pretty much just the white trees. And yes, I just named them white trees because I don't remember the names. Like I frequently have this where I'm like, you told me your name. Yeah, I probably remembered it for like a, a month at most, maybe a week. And then I forget it. So it, that's just a thing. I just don't remember names. I need visuals. And so when it came to the white tree, it's just like, yeah, the tree is white. It's the, I think, only one besides the birch tree. But then I do remember birch because I'm not that stupid. I am significantly stupid, but not that stupid that I forget a birch tree because we have them everywhere here in the Netherlands. But when it comes to the white tree, I was just like, yeah, this is the only tree. It's Australian and then it's white because of can. Of course, all of the weirdest things happen in Australia. Australia really is just the Florida of the world. Like Florida is the Florida of the U US. Australia is the Florida of the entire world. Like, just name something. And it's 10 times weirder in Australia. Crabs, really weird. Spiders, yeah, they're, they're pretty much as big as your entire arm in Australia. A birch, they're just... <laughs> like Australia lost a war against emus although I think that was more because like the emus kept flying away well flying away or running away that's the thing like they are very fast and so when they tried to shoot them because the emus were like basically a pest so that's why they was a war they just kept running away and they were just too fast which I mean in a way still is a lost war because you couldn't actually fulfill what you wanted to do and you had to actually surrender to birch birch emus like i know emus look evil and such but they also look like they have one brain cell that's just constantly just like bouncing around in their heads like emus 
don't look smart. And you lost the war against emus. How? Like, just sneak up on the birds. But then, you might not... Uh, there's probably multiple reasons why they lost that war. Anyways, back to the actual habitat. So, here's the thing when it came to kangaroos. I actually looked up how high can they jump. And uh, I think the record that I saw was like, oh, three meters. Or like, just above three meters. Now, here's the thing. And again, I blame Goron for this, but... I wanted the fence to be as invisible as possible. So that means, of course, having a lower fence and having like a dry moat. Does it really work if the animal can just jump three meters and more than that, just horizontally? But in the end, I decided, all right, let's have a dry moat. Let's add rocks to it so that there's an obstacle and then also add just fallen tree logs to kind of m make more obstacles for them to really jump because what a, a kangaroo needs to jump really far is like a bit of like a build up like you need to they need to have space to like start to slowly like the jumps become longer and longer and like pretty much just like a runner like they don't immediately go right off the bat at full speed they built that up so having like a bit of obstacles for the kangaroos actually did work out to well actually it already worked out right from the start because yeah the kangaroos don't jump three meters in planet zoo but it looks a little bit more believable what doesn't look believable is the size of the habitat because it looks way too small like i usually don't care about like oh yeah the habitat looks pretty that's good enough for me but here it just looks ridiculously small especially when you're looking at like the male kangaroo because the male kangaroo is like almost like a quarter size bigger than the females but it just it almost looks comical how small this habitat looks compared to the actual kangaroo but the kangaroo is completely happy like all of the stats are in the green it still looks like i'm trying to stuff a kangaroo into a dollhouse but then plant you is kind of a dollhouse in a way because it's just like how many times besides the cinematics do you see this game in action like how many times am i actually leaving the game unpassed not a lot of times i could tell you that but yeah i'm using a lot more of those white trees again don't know what they are gum trees i think but i don't know for sure but i like it because it's kind of gives off the idea of like oh this is another section within the australian area because this is supposed to be more of like inland kinds of animals and not really remnant or not really going off of references of like coastlines and such so i kind of like that but anyways that's going to be it for today's video i've talked about none of the subjects or the topics that i wanted to talk about so throw one unused topic at the like button and if you want to see more throw a dollhouse at the kangaroos or actually throw it at the subscribe button don't throw anything at the kangaroos anyways have a wonderful day guys bye bye